it was funny when actually kind of when we started going to school in uh, Milwaukee, you know, if you would say you're from Chicago and you're not from Chicago, the oh, people from actually from, yeah, the people from Chicago are like, no, you don't do that. <laughs> And then here's the thing, you will always get the rebuttal back, like, oh, what neighborhood are you from? Oh, I'm from High Park. I'm from Bronzeville. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm from Waukegan. And they're like, that ain't Chicago. Right. <laughs> and then you like, feel kind of played, like, oh, okay, well, Chicago land. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Black Student Success Podcast, where we bring you insight and guidance from successful Black professionals. My name is Selvin. Of course, we appreciate your support. If you are a Black student senior, uh, senior in high school, or know of a senior in high school, we do have our Black Student Success Scholarship that is now open. We're going to leave the link in the description, and the applications are due April 30th. So today, we have Rochelle Shipley on the show. She is an experienced media professional. She has uh, a lot of work and uh, has touched different platforms such as WTTW, uh, ABC, as well as Clear Channel. So she's going to talk about her experiences and, you know, her climb to where she's gotten to now and, you know, uh, and the things that she is looking to accomplish in the future. So let's welcome Rochelle Shipley. Rochelle, what's going on? Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, you know, it's just um, I'm really excited because, you know, me and you go back to Marquette. Yep. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be here and be able to talk to the students. My name is Rochelle L. Shipley. Um, and like uh, Sullivan said, I'm a media professional um, and I enjoy my job. And I'm so, so happy to be able to talk to you all today about it. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Well, well, thank you for for introducing yourself. So let's take it back. Let's you know take it back to when Rochelle was a kid. What was that childhood like that built up into the point that you actually got to school? Okay, um, so my childhood was really, really great. I'm from Waukegan, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Um, we're actually right smack dab in the middle of Milwaukee and Chicago, 45 minutes north, 45 minutes south. Um, and I grew up upper middle class. Um, my mother is an educator and my father is a lieutenant police officer. They're both retired. Um, and I, as a child, I got immersed in the arts. I um, it's, I'm classically trained in tap, jazz, and ballet. Um, I was in theater. I modeled. Um, I was always in the gifted and accelerated programs in my district. Um, and I just had kind of the ideal childhood, if there is one, just being exposed to all types of different avenues um, as far as careers and academics and um, just soaking it all in. So my childhood was really, really fun and exciting, um, and I was able to really benefit from being from Waukegan and being in a multicultural community. Um, so that's that was my childhood. It was great. I got to do a whole lot of things, and I played the violin, and um, you know, I was just able to kind of be in front of everybody and you know build my skills as far as being you know someone who communicates um, through different avenues. Nice, nice. And with all those things that you've been exposed to, what led you to get into broadcasting specifically? Um, well, when I was thinking of school, um, I mind you, I was a straight A student. Okay. I, <laughs> Let's get that out the way. <laughs> but um, I didn't particularly like math or science. So STEM was out. And my um, guidance counselor, um, the late, great Hank Clark of Waukegan, um, he sat me down and I actually graduated high school a year early. I was supposed to graduate in 2006 and I chose to graduate in 2005. And he was asking me, you know, um, like, what are some, you know, careers that you're thinking about and all this whatnot. And um, I just remember I didn't want to go into anything mathematic. And he was like, your writing is really, really good, Rochelle. And people are always drawn to you. And you're always, um, you know, talkative and trying to, you know, figure out people's stories and you connect well with people. Have you ever considered communications? And I was like, 
okay, like, does it make any money? You know, I was, <laughs> you know or like, is it, is it impactful? Like, what, what exactly are we talking about? Because I really, I really always thought of my communications kind of being like technology based, like phones and, and different things of that sort, or like a speech pathology or something like that. And um, he was like, no, I think you could be like a television producer, you know, like you, you kind of have that, that je ne sais quoi about you. So I was like, okay, you know. And I went to a few different um, college tours. I went to um, a few, you know, HBCUs and whatnot. And, um, you know, just kind of toured the different departments. And um, luckily I got to visit Southern University, which is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I got to see their mass communications um, program and they were like working on the cameras and they were doing like producer things and animation. And, you know, back in 2005, digital media had just started. So like for Facebook, you needed a college, you know, email to even have a Facebook account. It was like MySpace. You remember those days? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, you know, digital media was just like up and coming and they were like diving into that in their mass communications program. And I was like, you know, that was very interesting to me because it was so new. And they were talking about, you know, people are going to be able to make money off of like the videos they put online. And it was like, yeah, OK. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we are YouTubers and stuff, but back back in the day, that was something that everybody was like, okay, whatever, like keep your day job. Yeah. Um, but they were diving into that, so that's kind of what draw drew me to um, being in broadcast, kind of seeing them talk about the different things, and then you know when you see it, you can imagine it for yourself, right? So when I saw like kids my age that were producing content and editing and were on camera, but we're also talking about like audio, being like audio tech and different things. I was like, I could do that, you know, like I could, I could apply, you know, all of my um, uh, performance arts elements into this, you know, I could, I could see myself doing this. And it was, you know, I, I didn't want a career where every day was going to be the same. Yeah. So they were talking about like every day we're doing something different and blah, blah. So it just, it was like an energy. It was like a draw. And then, you know, around the time, it was like also different content that was out on TV about like the behind the scenes work. So like MTV had like making the video and different things like that. So I, like I could see like all these technology things and it just, you know, you, you didn't know up until that point, all of the jobs that were in media, you know, because the only job you really see is on on camera, you know, the talent, like, you know, about the directors, but do people really know what the re director does or the floor manager? Not really. So um, just being able to see all that in like within a year, I was like, OK, well, I can I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. You know, and, and it was it was uh, and it was glamorous. You know, and I tend to be a little bit more dramatic, but, you know, so I was interested, intrigued. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And, and I, I like how you do have, uh, you know, the, the different aspects of, you know, you talked about, you know, the, the, the glamorous side of it and, and the things that you can get into and still implement things that you've either picked up, like you talked about your whole performing arts or performing arts history and the, you know, um, you know, putting those things in, into perspective and then starting to translate that into a career is, you know, something that is exciting. And especially at that time when the whole digital media era was starting to kind of blossom and everything. So when it came to the the different areas that you can kind of explore, you know, you, you know, mentioned that you can be on air, you know, your experience has been a lot of behind the scenes type of stuff. What types of things did you do or how was exploring those different areas for you within broadcasting? Well, um, actually it first started out when I was at Southern university. Um, that was my freshman year. I was there, um, in 2005 and the hurricane Katrina happened mm. And um, we had, you know, that was like the biggest story for, you know, several years was, you know, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. So we had like a whole lot of reporters and um, like news directors that were like on our campus, on our campus, getting the story. So I was like asking them, you know, like, hey, you know, how do you do X, Y, Z? And they were always so kind to us and 
would just let me sit and watch because um, oftentimes like we didn't have class because we didn't have electricity and different things. And um, what happened was a lot of um, HBCUs that were in New Orleans ended up coming to Baton Rouge. So we had Dillard, Xavier, and then our sister school, Suno. So it was just like so many people and it was just like a readjustment of how to accommodate all these students, how to accommodate this full state and and people who, you know, um, had lost everything. Right. So um, I remember like a few of those uh, professionals actually came into our classrooms and was teaching us classes during that time because, you know, professors were, you know, um, trying to get schedules together or, you know, their, their attention was elsewhere. So they allowed me to kind of like have like a mini internship during that time. And then when I transferred to Marquette, um, due to just funding and just things being cut back at the university, um, I started joining like Marquette radio, which is where I met you, you know, and, um, being able to, we, we also had that internship at B103, you mm-hmm. know, and had access to like the equipment. That was one thing that was so cool about Marquette. Like I always wanted to have the HBCU experience, but a huge part of why I chose Southern and chose transfer to Marquette was that Marquette and Southern, they both allowed freshmen and sophomores to have practicum. So you were able to put your hands on the camera, put your hands on the board, see like, you know, where in this industry do I fit in? And you didn't have to wait junior and senior year because by that time, to be honest, you're in it. You know, you don't really want to change up your major. So the fact that I was able to have, you know, like Marquette Radio and we were able to go in there. Do you remember when we were in Marquette Radio? Like most of the music was independent and it was rock. Yeah. And I had the R and B show and you had the hip hop show. Exactly. And we kind of flipped that around in a couple years. <laughs> but you were but I remember like like understanding like how radio worked because remember we had to like go through like the CDs and label them and uh catalog them and all those different things and then that's what led to me being like, oh, I'm, I might like radio. So then I did, you know, the B103 um, internship. We both did. We were mm-hmm. there at the same time. Um, but when I was at B103, you did the um, actual broadcast internship and I did the promotion. Right, right. So I got to like see like more of like the promotions and audience engagement, which kind of led me to doing what I do now. Uh, which is, you know, um, most recently I was at ABC uh, as a programming coordinator. Um, so it was those internships and those clubs that I got into in my collegiate life that led me to, you know, like figure out my place. And if I wanted to be in radio, if I wanted to be in television, um, when I was getting my master's degree, um, I was able to work at WTTW and had an in- internship there with Chicago Tonight. So that kind of pivoted me more to television and out of radio. But I would always recommend that, you know, students, if you get any opportunity to join the clubs that are available within your major um, and definitely seek out internships so that you can just see the everyday life and what and what your career is like in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of those experiences, you know, doing the clubs and the different organizations and getting involved, whether you know anything about it or not, that tends to be super valuable and gives you the the room to make mistakes and learn what works well. You know, you have the on air aspect of it and then you have, you know, behind the scenes and there's a lot of different things that you can do with that and the whole, um, you know, uh, those pieces intertwining with each other as well. So, um, so I'm glad that you utilize that to do that exploring and, um, and, and thank you for highlighting the fact that you had an opportunity to, um, uh, basically look at the schools that allow you to kind of jump right into it because it can get a little scary if you get in their junior year and you have these realizations that that might not be the thing that you want to do and now you're kind of panicking so um yeah i like that aspect of market as well so uh there was something that you're gonna say well i was just saying that i remember being on marquette radio and 
that's kind of like where I realized like, mm, I may not want to be on air talent. Like you, you and Kyle really thrived at it. Like y'all <laughs> wanted to like post about your show and different things. And I, I was just kind of like, well, you know, if you want to listen to my show, listen to it. You know, <laughs> um, But I wasn't, I wasn't like marketing myself like you all were. And then that's when I kind of realized like maybe behind the scenes, like being the, you know, producer or, you know, um, being the news director is more up my alley, you know, because yeah. I, I was good at telling people what to do. You know, you I go. knew exactly <laughs> what to do, I, I didn't really have I didn't really have that like personality to be out there like in the forefront, you know. Yeah. Um, but I remember like even at like the 103, like with the promotional things, I liked engaging with the audience and and, you know, getting their stories and what they liked about the station and what events they were looking for, what artists they like. I like that more than ever, you know, being on, on air or as a talent, you know? So that's also what I realized. And then I also realized, you know, even, even the clubs that were not media driven, like black suit and council Mm -hmm. that taught me, you know, like working with others for a common goal. Yeah. You know, and working and, and being socially responsible and and knowing the issues, which also played a role in when I got into new. Um, so, you know, I, I would say make sure that you diversify um, the clubs that you're in because you can you can have transferable skills from all of them um, and, and get something out of all of them. Nice, nice. That's what's up. So now let's actually kind of talk about some of the different qualities of kind of working within media that you've experienced, you know, not only while you were on campus, but, you know, post-graduation. You know, what are some of those qualities that students can kind of keep in mind when it comes to working in media, whether it's, you know, the, the digital era or if it's, you know, working, you know, um, you know, in radio, on TV, what types of aspects of the industry can students look forward to or anticipate if they're trying to get into it? Well, as you know, it's highly competitive um, and it's even more so now because, um, you know, historically when you were in broadcast or, you know, on radio or television, not necessarily did you have to have a a degree for that. You know, Mm -hmm. there were such things as DJs and on-air personalities that were just people that were, that had natural gifts, right, to connect with people. But now you have um, content creators that don't come from a media background, you know, and they have these large um, platforms like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. And, you know, they're also in in the field and looking to uh, pivot to television and radio and whatnot. So it's highly competitive. Um, And I would say if you're a person that doesn't like to advocate for yourself or advocate for your ideas or um, is afraid to um, have difficult conversations, I wouldn't say that uh, television would be, or or even radio um, or any medium would be, um, you know, something that you should pursue because it's, it's something that you have to, it, every task you have to advocate for yourself mm-hmm. um, to, to get um, certain opportunities or um, different exposures and different things like that. Um, for everybody, you know, not just, you know, people of color, or LGBTQ or et cetera, you know. Um, but I would say um, even more so as a black media professional, you have to still pay that old black tax mm-hmm. um, where you have to be twice as good, twice as knowledgeable. You have to know what you're talking about. Um, you have to do your research. You have to, um, you know, be exemplary. And um, you have to make sure that when you are going into these um, platforms that you stay true to who you are Mm -hmm. and be your authentic self um, because you you can't hide it. You know, Um, when you're talking about like storytelling and and different content that you may be advocating to see, um, especially when it comes to the representation of um, certain groups. sometimes you have to fight for it. And sometimes you have to have really difficult conversations and conversations that you're 
tired of having or conversations that you feel like people should already get and understand. Um, historically, media has always had, um, you know, the executive levels have always been white males. Um, but we are seeing a change in the industry. Um, and I think, you know, we're seeing a change, you know, in our society as a whole, um, you know, after the, the death of George Floyd. Yeah. Um, where we as a people, as a black community, we're demanding, um, you know, industries to um, rise to the challenge of diversity, inclusion and equity and um, not settling for, you know, having to pay the old black tax or not having to settle for uh, inequities and um, lack of representation or inappropriate representation, things of that sort. So we're seeing a big shift in media right now as far as um, diversity and inclusion at the executive levels. Um, another thing that we're seeing is a lot of recruitment um, towards Black storytellers and content creators and producers um, and, and trying to draw in um, the future content creators, you know, as young as, you know, elementary school and middle school yeah. um, and going to HBCUs and recruiting. Um, and then also, you know, when you actually get in the field, having mentorship mm -hmm. and having leadership opportunities and really advocating for those things. And um, even like within the last year, we're seeing, you know, um, at the executive level at many of our major um, media companies, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, NBC, you know, we're starting to see a shift where they're starting to um, have black executives, you know, because for a long time, the, the conversation could be about us without us. Yeah. And so just knowing that you have to be true to yourself um, and advocate for yourself and and be prepared to have the hard conversations um, because it, it does affect um, what, what is put into the world and, you know, you have to stand in your ethics and your moral, um, and, and be morally sound and what you, you know, what's going on in your gut. Is this right? Is this an image that we really want to put out there? Are we being, um, fair with like the images of one demographic versus another? Are we being negative? Are we, you know, um, providing, a full total like view of the whole community and what's going on, or are we just focusing on the negative um, and being able to have those conversations with your colleagues and having those conversations with the community and realizing that this industry is about you being a servant leader and, you know, your, your, your voice um, is the voice of many. And, um, you know, what, what you, what you allow to happen or not happen or speak up for, you know, I'm a big person about, I want to see positive representation of my own, yeah, you know, absolutely. especially since I know I come from that and um, it exists and there is such thing as black excellence, um, not being afraid to have those conversations, not being able to have conversations about, you know, different technologies and different streams that are available and opportunities that, you know, millennials and Generation Zs may be um, more familiar with um, and having those conversations as well as, you know, like the innovation con conversations. That's mm -hmm. another thing, too. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. You have to you have to advocate for yourself. Um, know that there may be some roadblocks, but, you know, you just go through them and. Yeah. And um, there's there's gr there's greater opportunities than there are, you know, um, negatives in this industry. But you will face negatives. Yeah. Um, but you have to you have to have some integrity about yourself. You can't you can't just be silent. Yeah, a lot of great points there. And I think one of the good things is being aware that there are those environments or those companies that allow you to be your authentic self. And if you're able to catch that on, even like in the, the interview process, then 
Uh, you know, one of the points that we like to make is that, you know, that is a two way street, you know, you're, you know, looking for a, uh, a, you know, a reputable company to, to work for, and then they're looking for someone to like represent them well. So, um, you know, it's gotta be good on both sides. Right. So, um, and the, uh, a question I had is actually, you know, because now we have these different platforms that, um, you know, I guess mostly Generation Z and some millennials are, are are using in terms of TikTok and, and Instagram to really, you know, market themselves. Do you find that those who have those platforms or developing those platforms, plus having that traditional uh, education, you know, behind a degree, do you find those people to be in a very good spot competitive com- competition wise? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, um, you have to, you have to understand that, um, when you go to, um, undergrad or you get a master's degree in media or television, broadcast, radio, digital media, and storytelling, um, all these different facets, um, you're getting the foundation. You know, you're getting the skill set, you're getting the understanding of um, audience and how to communicate to an audience and how to be most affection. I mean, um, most effective um, with, you know, distribution um, and things of that sort. So it's definitely, I would say, um, to the benefit of, of many content creators to have academic backgrounds in communications and in broadcast. Um, even if they want to go on the digital side, yeah. because like I said, that's a transferable skill. It, like it applies um, also on that end, you know, the digital media spectrum. So oh, that's what's up. Now let's talk about the, uh, the, you know, your graduate education. Now you were talking about how you are, you know, you got your degree in, you know, digital media and, and storytelling. And from the sounds of that, that's a little bit more specific than just a general broadcasting mass communications type of program. So can you talk to us about what you learned from that program and what you found valuable, especially in today's industry? Um, well, the great thing about it was is that when I went to Marquette, um, you know, we we got all of our foundational um, as far as like camera, lighting, audio and all those things. But when I got my master's degree from Loyola University, Chicago, um, once again, in digital media and storytelling, um, we got to learn about you know, the, the Instagrams, the TikToks, the Facebooks and all of those different things and web analytics and um, um, like what are the best practices for your site to be, you know, visible for people to see. I'm trying not to use industry jargon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you learn how to be more visible um, and how to connect to uh, a global audience which is, you know, something that you may not get um, just solely in broadcasting because most of the time, you know, you're in a local market or your network, you know, and not so often do you learn about the global audience, right? So that's what I learned um, at Marquette was how to transfer my skill set that I had with like video editing and things and how to um, put it out there for the digital format and for the digital format, just, you know, so we're all clear, like the digital format is very different from television and radio. Like they all have their different formats. So the digital format, you know, I learned like if you want to do like a hook or a teaser, that needs to be 10 seconds. You know, people don't want to watch long videos online. You know, their documentaries and they're going very specifically to that entity um, to get their content. So, like, for example, it'd be like ESPN 30 for 30. That'd be like a longer documentary that people are actually going to see. Um, But for the most part on the digital realm, you want to keep your stories fairly short. And that's like a different editing skill set, you know, and a different um, way that you would tell a story because it's more of the visual components that people say like, oh, like this caused me to feel this way or whatnot, rather than the words. Mm -hmm. And the words are always what leads news um, or leads, you know, newspapers and things like that. So, and and definitely radio. Um, 
So just learning those different formats. And then also I got to learn about streaming, you know, which when I got my degree in 2014, which isn't that long ago, um, streaming was just, you know, kind of up and moving and people were just, you know, talking about it. But now you have like Disney Plus and ESPN Plus and Hulu and, um, you know, Netflix and all these different, you know, streaming um, entities. But those weren't like a real thing back then, you know, and once again, it was learning about how can you utilize those different platforms with your content. So that's what I learned. I learned what's what's up and coming. What should I be looking out to to put my content out in the world? Nice, nice. And it's um, it's it's pretty cool to, you know, I'm sure for you, especially when you've kind of started going through that program and you've seen how that idea of streaming has evolved and manifested into basically a lot of the things that we see today. And I'm sure it's pretty cool to kind of be at the, the beginning of that and, and being able to apply those things and see where that, you know, that area is growing, especially with the different platforms and, and things like that, that are developing. Now, did it, did, was it more difficult to adjust to that, shorter time frame when it came to creating content versus, you know, what you've been used to before that whole thing? Um, I would say no, because for me, it was really hard to do that long form mm. <laughs> um, rather than short form. And I think it, it has to do with, um, you know, just being a millennial in our generation. Um, we, we are a unique generation where we remember, you know, um, the internet just being formed and like AOL and you got yeah. me. Uh -huh. um, but we also, you know, lived in a time where, you know, internet was global and, um, you know, we were the innovators of Facebook and MySpace and all those platforms and things. And we, we are kind of the, inner, the um, generation that kind of has like the short form of communication. So like when you think about when you text somebody, you know, we're not, writing long texts. It's like, you know, LOL and da, 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 you know, we were the we were the first generation to come up with that. Now really? you have old yeah. and all that stuff. So my my way of communicating, um, other than this interview, obviously, because I told you I would be thorough. <laughs> um, you know, and very clear and concise. So um it was easier for me with the digital media uh format to to be just the one and two and just to have the, you know, like they say in the industry, the meat and the, and the potatoes, you yeah. know, and the full course meal, you know, so, no. there you go. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, it's, um, I, I, it's funny to think, you know, if that that standard is going to get any shorter, if it's going to be like, you know, you need you get you got three seconds to get that story out, and if not, you just lost the person. So no, but that's really cool to kind of see how you, you know, you, you know, again, with like you said, with our generation kind of being at the forefront, um, basically allowing, you know, what we see today to actually have legs and be able to move like that. Um, and, and, you know, have that experience of kind of seeing how all of that's kind of grown and, you know, be able to still keep up with all of that. I think that's a really important thing. So mm -hmm. Last, uh, one of the last questions here. Now, if you were to, to go back, um, taking all the experiences that you have, you know, uh, you know, grown and um, accumulated over the years, what would you say to your childhood self in terms of some advice that you would give to them? Um, to thy own self be true, mm -hmm. you know, um, cause that's what it comes down to. And that, you know, if you want this Rochelle, you, you go for it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this is a very competitive field, um, and oftentimes it takes a lot of one's time. Um, it's very time consuming. Um, as my father says, television doesn't go off anymore. Neither does radio. Um, and there's just so there's just so much content out there, yeah. right? That you have to, in order to be effective in the field. You have to, um, you know, be producing content that you yourself will want watch and you yourself can stand behind. Um, you know, I'm I'm in the programming side. Um, like I said, uh, my most recent job was at WLS ABC. I was the programming coordinator, and a lot of my primary um, tasks were scheduling 
and FCC and viewer engagement and, um, you know, just working with different departments to come together to produce the best product for our viewers mm-hmm. um, and in the best time slots and, you know, with with the demographic that would be interested in watching, um, you know, the different um local content that we produce um, or localish content that we produce. Um, But I would say, you know, I I would tell myself, just stay the course, like you're going to get there. And as long as you're having a good time and you're being true to yourself and you are getting out of it, what you put in, um, you know, it's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And to, you know, always be socially responsible um, and to be kind. Um, I do have one story I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but I wanted, wanted to say this. This also goes to what I would tell myself, don't burn bridges. Mm. Because when I was in college, I I don't remember myself really like networking with like the Marquette TV kids. Yeah, yeah. It, they were kind of like very, to me, they came off kind of like elitist mm. and very territorial. Mm. And I remember thinking, okay, but don't burn bridges. You know, you're going to be in the same industry, still try to be, you know, cordial and all those things. But I work with you at Marquette Radio and I went into B103, um, an interview, and I was Miss Black and Gold at the time, or I had just finished my ring and Ed was there. Uh, um, okay. So, yeah. And he was doing hip hop, you see it, and mm-hmm. you were there on the radio. And Sean John interviewed me, and he was like, you know, we don't have any internships available. You know, like I, I'll keep your name on file. You know, if something comes up, he was like, why, why do you want to do radio? You got a face for TV. You know, like he was kind of like the one in the two with me. Mm-hmm. My interview with him was literally, I, I remember this. It was six minutes and 36 seconds. Uh And I was like, and I remember that because I used to have like a a stopwatch and whatnot. And you know how you like look to see like if you're on time, that that's what it was. And I walked out and you were coming in to start your day. You was like, hey, Rochelle. I was like, hey, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I, I make it back to Marquette and I get a call from Sean John. And I guess he had asked you. Like, do you know this girl? You know, she's from Marquette or whatever. She also does Marquette Radio. And you gave me a good review and was like, oh, she's prompt. She's cool. You know, whatever. Then he asked Ed because he saw that I was Miss Black and Gold. And, you know, Ed was AFIA. Yep. He was, you know, um, in the same, you know, chapter that I was in. Um, I mean, that, um, you know, I did Miss Black and Gold. Mm-hmm. So. I guess he asked the two of y'all and y'all gave me rave reviews and was like, yeah, you should give her an internship. It was just an internship. You ain't paying her, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I got that internship. You see? So <laughs> or a jerk to Ed, I wouldn't have got my first opportunity in broadcasting. Yeah. So that's what I would, would tell myself, like, you need to be authentic. You need to be kind. You need to be punctual. You need to be exemplary, but you also shouldn't burn bridges. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it, it helps. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I, you know, um, I'm glad that that's what it led to. And then it's, you know, led to everything that you've accomplished today. Um, yeah. You know, you were always a cool person, you know, there wasn't <laughs> any issue. So yeah, well, I, I had no issue with saying that, Hey, you know, Rochelle will be dope for the job. So, uh, so, so definitely glad that that's what it led up to. You and Ed, you know, and I know Ed was on here before he's one of your, you know, first uh, interviews, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Every time I think about you too, I was like, you know, that is a prime example of if I had been even like standoffish or like, you know, I don't know, like arrogant or whatever towards mm-hmm. you, you know, I wouldn't even got my first opportunity. There you go. There you go. Yeah, don't burn your bridges, y'all. <laughs> the, the networking, yeah, the networking helps. So, so thanks, thanks for sharing that too. Um, now, before we wrap up, I do got a, a few fun questions for you, just to allow the listeners to learn a little bit more about you. Um, so, we're gonna start with um, this one. I thought this was fun because you know, with you being from Waukegan, um, I'm from Evanston, so I think we kind of know how this is gonna go. Um, 
if you're out of town, you know, as a, you know, someone from the Chicagoland area and someone asks you where you're from, how do you answer that? I say that I'm from the Chicagoland area from a place called Waukegan known as the town. <laughs> and, um, we are 45 minutes north um, and 45 minutes south of Chicago and Milwaukee. And um, we are right smack dab in the middle. Um, and then they say, oh, OK, you from Chicago. And I say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's that's really that's really good that you that you start off with Chicago land area. So now they're kind of okay. Now not in the city, but kind of around the city. So I started doing that. It was funny when actually kind of when we started going to school in uh, Milwaukee. You know, if you would say you're from Chicago and you're not from Chicago, the oh, people from actually from, yeah, the people from Chicago are like, no, you don't do that. <laughs> And then here's the thing, you will always get the rebuttal back, like, oh, what neighborhood are you from? Oh, I'm from High Park. I'm from Bronzeville. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm from Waukegan. And they're like, that ain't Chicago. Right. <laughs> and then you like, feel kind of played, like, oh, okay, well, Chicago land. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You got to watch <laughs> who you're around. If, if it's like, you know, you're going like, you know, somewhere out there, you know, nobody's from there. You'd be like, oh, I'm from Chicago. So, <laughs> so no, it's nice. So, um, if you're at the cookout, what are you most likely doing? Okay, so if I'm at the cookout, I'm mostly being TT, which is, you know, auntie. So uh -huh. <laughs> I'm helping with the games. I'm, you know, serving the dessert. <laughs> I'm being helpful. There you I'm go. At the cookout, being helpful. Um, and then, you know, I'm probably dancing. Now, if if it's a Greek cook-off, mm -hmm. I'm probably still being helpful. But I'm probably in the stroll line uh -huh. or you know, doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I would I would definitely be in that same boat. My knees aren't the best at this time. So so probably like a fifth of the time that I would normally spend strolling is what I would be doing. Um, now, uh, what's your favorite comedy series right now? And then also, you know, uh, drama series that you like at this time? OK, well, like I said, I, I've worked for ABC for a while. That was my most recent employer. And um, so I'm biased. Um, mm -hmm. I was on um, the pilot team um, that, you know, did like the research and whatnot um, and watched the pilots and different things for um, The Good Doctor. Mm. So we gave, you know, the feedback for the pilots and all that stuff. So The Good Doctor is probably my favorite drama just because, you know, I was a part of the team that, you know, saw the first pilot and gave feedback and they made revisions and things of that sort. So that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and then I would say Mixed Dish because mm. my uh, sister, Tamika Smolter, is on there. And I think uh. she did a really, really good job. Yeah. So. You know, I, you got to support, you know, women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, especially when you are a member yeah. of that sorority. So there I was, you, you know, I, I try to support her. Um, and I just think it's a funny um, uh, show in general. Um, and it's a good spinoff um, with the, you know, Blackish franchise. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. All right. Now. Out of these four foods, you, if you had to give one of these up for life, which one would it be? Uh, your choices are potatoes, bread, rice, and pasta. Okay, I was going to ask you, okay, mm -hmm. when you say bread, does that also include tortillas? Uh, no, let's, let's say that. Okay. Let's just say typical, like, typical thoughts of bread, bagels, Toast, stuff like that. Okay, I can give up bread, okay. but I can't, can't give up tortillas because I like wraps. Okay. But I can I can give up bread because I try to keep my carbs down. Okay. But I, I, I like my rice, um, especially when I'm having it with my gumbo. Mm -hmm. So I can give that up. And then, you know, French fries is one of my favorite foods. Like, that's my cheat food. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would say bread. I could give up bagels. I can give up loaves. Okay. Well, keep them tortillas. I got to keep them tortillas. <laughs> I got you. All right. And then last question, you know, um, 
you know, top three memes. It could be of all time. It could be your favorite ones right now. What are those three? Okay. Um, reclaiming my time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, because you could, you could just use it in so many different situations. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one, I can also use it in different situations, which actually comes from mixed, mixed dish. And that is, um, I know that's right. <laughs> there you go. Uh uh-huh. and then um there's a meme that most AKs know, which is it's my anniversary and she's doing the Ray Shrimmer. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh-huh. There you go. Nice, nice. Well, a, a, a perfect three, a very fitting three <laughs> at that. So um Rochelle, that's all I got for you. Thank you for, for being on the show. If there is um any information, anything you'd like to plug, um, if any of our listeners want to reach out to you, um, you know, I'm gonna give you the floor to uh, put all that info out there. Okay, sounds good. Um, you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm easy to reach. Um, I'm not plugging anything at this time, um, but there's going to be great things to come from Rochelle L. Shipley. So be on the lookout. Um, I post a lot on Instagram and on Facebook. You know, I'm still a millennial. I ain't gotten to the TikTok and all that. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you have any further questions or, um, you know, want some advice or whatever, I'm always open to helping the youth of, you know, Chicagoland, the world, whatever. So I do want to say thank you so much for this opportunity because, you know, I told you I was a little bit nervous, like I'm more so used to being behind the scenes and this is a skill set that, you know, I've lost and I'm trying to develop again, you know, being out in the forefront. But I'm so proud of you and Ashley for this. Like, I just remember both of you always being woke Um, always being present in the Black Student Union and, you know, always advocating for students. So I just, this is like the perfect platform for the two of you. And I'm just so proud of you. You know, Ashley was like my little sister when she first (laughs) came to the campus, her and Kiki. There you go. And then you was, you know, my Marquette radio brother. So I'm just Mm -hmm. so proud of you both for, you know, doing this. and, And I hope nothing but the best and abundance. Absolutely. No, uh, you greatly appreciate it. And then just even getting to know you was was definitely an honor. So so thanks for for blessing us uh, for being on the show. Um, Thanks to everybody who's been listening. Uh, Don't forget to uh, like, comment, share and subscribe to the podcast. And we're also on social media. That's at Inquire Hire. Uh, So uh, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And then please check out uh, InquireHire.com. Got a lot of great information there. So until next time, peace. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.